Very nice. So um, welcome everybody. I am Vincenzo for the Root Team. Today, I want to talk to you about uh, high throughput analysis with modern Root. The analysis landscape in high energy physics is uh, it's very diverse, right? We get different programming languages, uh, mainly C++ and Python. We have different means for data storage, local disks, network storages, EOS, or any other backend. And we also have different platforms where to run those analysis from a user's laptop to a many core machine to some computing cluster with its own submission system there going on. And users can easily lose performance here because they might not know what's the right tool for their situation. Maybe they have to adapt their programming model. They have to use different APIs depending on which combination of language storage or platform they, they need. Well, in Root, we, we are trying to taking all of this away with a single entry point for all the analysis that rely on these resources. And that's our data frame. Uh, our data frame is a high level interface to data uh, that can be stored in a various, uh, various data formats. It allows a wide range of operations like defining new columns or uh, selecting important events for your analysis, creating histograms and, and many more. Uh, I leave the reference guide and the tutorials in the slide for, for more details. The programming model here is a declarative one. The user defines a set of operations that ha have to be executed on data, and these operations form a computational graph. Then our data frame makes sure to, to run this graph of operations lazily in a single event loop. And this programming model can be executed as is from Python, uh, thanks to PyRoot, the root Python bindings. Now, our data frame has been in production in root for a while. And, and this shows because it's actually being, being used uh, as a foundation for a wide range of applications, going from publications to as well as uh, analysis uh, software frameworks. So for example, we have a CMS analysis on nano AOD data that produced almost 6,000 histograms. And that was recently presented at the EP software seminar in October. Another example where we process root compressed root data at two gigabytes per second. Um, the totem use case, this was actually a distributed analysis over a cluster. It was presented last year at uh, Europar. And as I told, also software frameworks like uh, Bamboo uh, that, uh, that has achieved a high turnaround for analysis on CMS data. By the way, stick around for the next talk by Peter David for more info on, on this software framework. And these are just the use cases that we know of. There are a lot of examples of our data frame usage in, in the wild from experiments to our own forum where now the number of posts that were tagged with the uh, hashtag rdataframe uh, has reached roughly the same number as the number of posts tagged with hashtag tree or hashtag hist. And this is already a, a very telling sign. But rdataframe, even though it's in production and widely used, this is uh, not the end, right? We, we want to strive for more, for better performance. And in fact, there is a lot of R&D going on in, in the root team. For instance, we tried to run this analysis by, by Atlas on, actually it's an open data analysis uh, with our data frame. And in particular, in this example, we have multiple data samples. Each sample is processed in its own event loop, multi-threaded, so that's nice, but uh, the different samples are executed one after the other. The, the other. So the issue is if one data sample is too small, it will bring a high overhead when it will be processed over a large amount of cores. And this can hinder the performance for, for the whole analysis actually. So the solution that we've come up with is to start the processing of all event loops concurrently. And in this way, we can exploit all available cores on, on the machine. So this feature is actually already in root master and it will be available in the upcoming 6.24 release. Now, if you take a look at the, at the image on the top right of this slide, you will see that we are still not achieving the optimal scaling that we would like. And in this case, we are actually limited by the IO on the, on the machine that we have at our disposal for this test. So 
if anybody listening has any beefier environment than this, we would be more than happy to try this feature out on, on other machines. But what if we don't want to use only one machine? When one machine is not enough, what we are trying to do is to distribute the workload over many machines, while at the same time overcoming the IO limitations through caching input data. And this is what we are trying to do for now by using Spark as a scheduler to, to actually distribute the R data frame analysis over a cluster with, uh, with multiple nodes. And so far we have benchmarked these two open data analysis. Um, they, they are both fully reproducible and representing real world scenarios. We are running on a cluster at the KIT University with four nodes and 48 physical cores in total. The first example here is uh, a simpler use case. We are processing 200, roughly 200 gigabytes of data with two different set of measurements. The first one uh, was taken with data stored in a public US namespace. And the second one was taken with data stored, actually cached locally on, on the nodes. Um, as you can see from the image on the right, this scales out quite nicely but the caching with X3D here is the clear winner. And in fact, the best performance that we got with uh, using the, the full cluster with 48 cores is a throughput of 780 megabytes per second, which is very nice. So this is very nice, but this analysis is uh, quite simple, right? We are outputting only a single plot. Can we show similar results, similar uh, throughput for a more complex workflow? Then the next example of benchmark is based on, well, a more complex analysis with nano AOD like data format. Uh, we actually took data from run one, uh, open data by CMS, and we scaled it 15 times. What we are trying to achieve here is to have something of a similar scale to compare to LHC run two. The input is nine uh, data sets and the output are 34 stacked plots, like the one you see on the left side of this slide. Uh, they collectively uh, have more than 600, 680 histograms. Uh, three the minutes, real depends on. Okay. The real takeaway here is the following. So if we run this benchmark on the full cluster, four nodes, 48 physical cores, we can bring the analysis turnaround cycle to 30 minutes. And this is also something that we were really impressed with. But what, what if we want even more than this? Maybe we want something different than this. So far, we have explored the computing, the processing side, but there's also data and there's the data format itself. So how about changing it? Harin Tuple is this new optimized data layout in root it's actually an experimental evolution of the established root T3. It features uh, a reduced event size, target throughputs of up to 10 gigabytes on fast SSD storage and support for par parallel storage devices and multi-threaded environments. RNTuple also natively integrates with object stores and there is a current R&D effort going on to integrate RNTuple with Intel DAOs. So to summarize, our airframe is the single entry point for a modern root analysis from a laptop to a computing cluster. It's in production, it's battle tested, and it shows that in many real world applications from publications to software frameworks, but there's also a strong ongoing R&D with different focuses uh, on exploiting all available cores on a machine, on data locality for increased throughput, especially in a distributed environment, and also on re-engineering the root data format to optimize IO. With that said, I thank you for your attention. And if you want to get in touch with us, here is our contact list. Thank you. Excellent, Vincenzo. Thanks so much. And uh, your timing was uh, really good as well. So that's great. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so I see a hand raised. The first one is from Doug. So go ahead, Doug. Um, yeah, slide 17, you talk about object stores being first class citizens with RN Tuple. Mm -hmm. Could you expand on that just a little bit? So um, our, I repeat that RN Tuple is a bit of an experimental feature in Root. Um, we are trying to, to make it so that the, the possibility of storing 
root, root data in, in object stores is actually there and it's natively. Uh, it's natively there. Um, the, the first experimental integration with Intel DAOs is uh, still not available, but as soon as we have more on that, we'll make sure to, to let you know. If you will want more, uh, more details, there is also the paper that I link at the bottom of the slide. And of course, you can get in contact with us whenever you want. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Vincenzo. Um, Thomas, question from you. Yes, hi. Um, so we have uh, tried uh, our data frame in, in, in the last few weeks a bit, and we have run into some issues when the input file is, uh, let's say, has a high compression factor. And um, I just wanted to ask if there is any any developments going into that direction, and and or ask differently, what are the memory requirements for the machine on which the R data frame analysis is run at the end? Well, the, the underlying, uh, well, currently R data frame um, runs on data that most of the times is uh, stored in T3 format. So whatever analysis was working on the T3 format, it should work as is on R data frame. I wouldn't know about hard limits on the, the memory that a machine needs to have to, to run an analysis with R data frame. But if you're finding bugs or, or issues, you can definitely get in contact with us with Enrico would be the prime candidate to help you out with that. Um, yeah, I believe we were in contact in fact. And mm. uh, um, yeah, uh, uh, so the uh, as discussed on the forum, uh, if you if you open uh, one such T3 in in every thread, uh, this is the memory usage you get. It's not uh, R data frame related strictly. It's more uh, root format related. Uh, yeah, we can. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we can keep discussing and uh, and find and try to figure out a workaround for you. Uh, that does not. Yeah, but if I if I remember correctly. You had a super uh, high compression factors, um, so that the usual thirty megabytes, um, thirty megabytes per thread of compressed data, when you uncompressed it, it, it resulted in like four hundred megabytes per thread, right? So in, <laughs> uh, in, of, of uncompressed data in memory. So in your case, uh, that, that's a bit extreme. The usual uh, requirement is. Uh, the uncompressed version of 30 megabytes per um, per thread. Whatever that means for your... For yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the details we can definitely take off on, but related to, to R and Tuple, is, uh, is this something that's likely going to be different with R and Tuple, for example? Or is this something that uh, doesn't would, wouldn't make a difference between R and Tuple and T3, for example? Uh, there was a bit of a discussion there um, it, within the team. Uh, R and Tuple will have uh, a bit more knobs that you can turn, um, but uh, those are knobs that you need to turn at a right time, probably. And uh, if you can tweak your right time, um, then you can do so for, for T3 um, already. Right. Uh, you can write smaller baskets uh, or a similar, you know, smaller uh, auto flush uh, parameters for D3. Uh, so um, the yeah, RN Tuple will offer uh, a bit more flexibility, um, but probably it's uh, flexibility that you need to exploit at, at right time, uh, which is also <laughs> at that point something that you can do with, with D3 to solve your particular problem. Um, all right, thanks. Okay, thanks, uh, Enrico, Thomas. Uh, so I think we have a question from Attila as well. Um, yeah, just relatively quickly. So I, I was very pleased to, to see that, that you mentioned an, um, an open data analysis from Atlas. Uh, I was just, since I haven't heard about this before, I was wondering if, if we helped you in any way, if people in, from Atlas helped you in this or or was there any interaction on, on setting up this, this example? Or how did this go? Yeah, um, so Stefan is the... Let, let me hook in. <laughs> yeah, 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 um, go on. <laughs> so, um, 
Yeah, of course. The the plain data comes from from the open data guys from yeah. Atlas. Um, well, let's say I know them personally. <laughs> That's uh, how everything came together. And um, of course, we so at least, let's say I took the um, the code you have and the code you publish with the open data and translated it to data frame. Uh, this effort came from the root team, all the data and the, let's say the physics, <laughs> the physics knowledge and uh, what you have to compute to get a W bone boson mass, for example, here came from Atlas. Um, okay, does this yeah, yeah. answer your question or? Yeah, yeah, it does. Uh, if you took the, uh, the code bundled with the open data, yeah. That's the right way of doing it. Yeah, exactly. So uh, the logic is the same than from your published analyses, uh, but of course the computing model is uh, the focus here. Okay, thanks. Okay, thank you. Um, I think we have time for one more question if anyone has one. Maybe I'll just throw in a quick one then. Um, how much are you designing our data frame to let's say scale for many users attacking the same storage on the grid? Because that can often be the bottleneck mm -hmm. as opposed um, to like an individual workstation or small cluster. Yeah. Um... I personally think that uh, the, the, the programming model is a bit decoupled from the data format in our data frame. Um, I don't know if, if Enrico has any specifics about the submission system on the cluster of the, sorry, on the grid. I think there is, uh, yeah. No, actually, um, our data frame is, uh, um, our data frame is designed to um, uh, make the most of the available bandwidth. Mm -hmm. So if you open um, like 100 different files uh, via X through D, um, it will try to um, to open different files at a time so you can actually get better throughput uh, because those mm -hmm. files might be on, the, on different servers yeah. or on different disks, right? Um, uh, so that's what it can do um, at the level of uh, reading data remotely for, for a single user. Uh, our data frame does not know how many users are using the machine and what the total available bandwidth uh, is for the machine. Um, so, so uh, um, yeah, if you, if you have multiple users that are trying to um, read as much data as possible as fast as possible, they will, of course, uh, step on each other's toes. That's where submission systems uh, sort of uh, come in handy, right? Okay, it's, yeah, uh, it will be, be a layer on top. Yeah, other aspect to look at. Okay, great. Well, I think we have to move on now. Thanks very much to everyone who contributed to the discussion.